gotten completely bizarre at this stage. I have never, in my 40, almost six years, I have never seen anything this weird. You know what I mean? The current geopolitical system, the current state of the game, the world game, okay? Between all the banks and all the war pigs. Anyways, man, it's a radical absurdity. Post-radical. Sorry, buddy. To me, it's like a film that Stanley Kubrick and Peter Sellers would have made in like 1960, 68, 69. Like instead of like 2001, right? Kubrick does this movie. And it's basically the story of the Trump presidency. You have the Soviet Union going on. You have all that iconography, you have all that infrastructure. The grand old days in, in the USSR. But this is, the, this is the USSR of that song by the Beatles, the classic song, right? Yeah, this is a collaboration between Kubrick and Peter Sellers, and maybe the character is not called, is not given the name of our illustrious current president, okay? Maybe it's, he's called something else. Maybe he's called Lionel Lost. You like that? Lionel Lost. The fact that any of it happened is so far-fetched, so. Um, nevertheless, right? Essentially, it's, this is the story. This is the basic story, right? It's the height of the, 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 the KGB stuff. It's the Cold War espionage uh, milieu. And in this milieu, it's, it's whatever it was actually like, okay, to be um, a Soviet a citizen, to take that on. And, and they'll tell you. Not for me to say. I want to make that abundantly clear. It's basically the story, right? A kind of Citizen Kane kind of story, right? Of the life of this, this con man, par excellence, egoic, uh, just, just dominant monkey male mind, right? Uh, this is a person who is not in any way uh, esoteric or ethereal or spiritual at all. This person is a is a throbbing membrane, right? For money and women and graft and right and casinos and buildings and that's who Lionel Lost is and that's who Peter Sellers is. Peter Sellers is playing this role. And he's just the biggest fool you ever seen. Getting away with it all. And he gets the presidency of the United States. But here's the deal. Years earlier, because of some business dealings, shady business dealings with the Soviet Union. He uh, gets compromised. He becomes a KGB asset. And he's a KGB asset for one particular reason. He's, he's, he's a mole for the Soviet impulse system to, to destroy America, which is their absolute goal. Cripple and, and, and create a world island kind of geopolitical dynamic, right? This is what's happening. They've got to subvert the United States at every level. And of course, the United States is doing their best to subvert them behind the ball. Nevertheless, 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 nevertheless. Could you see this unfurling? Could you imagine walking out of this movie in like 1969? Like, what the F? Like that's a paranoid fantasy. Anti-communist, uh, anti-Soviet. Energy, hurricane force energy. A lot of that energy in the populace, you know, the other. And at that time, the other is the Soviet Union, right? The, the, most, the, the most horrible thing you could imagine, the most unimaginable thing you could imagine, was that the Russians would essentially take an American fool, a showman, right? A, a, a carnival barker, a con man, and they would essentially install him uh, in the United States presidency and destroy the United States from within. This is the ultimate red paranoiac. And we're living it now. 
It happened. Mm. There's no doubt the Russians intervened most vigorously in the United States elections using the means that they have available to them technologically. Made a fool of everybody. Right? Could you imagine this movie? off the jacket now, Mr. Camera. How are you today? Are you doing well in Doodlebop land? This is a special dress that this young lady got from Santa Claus. She got them from Santa and it's a special rainbow and unicorn dress. Sparkly, sparkly pink dress, and she loves it. And I think that's great. What's wrong with that? Could you imagine this film? Wouldn't this be brilliant? Peter Sellers, man, role of a lifetime. Lionel Lost. And then what happens to Lionel Lost? Okay, so here's what happens to Lionel Lost. Lionel Loss, of course, has a beautiful, right, Balkan wife, former model. She's now first lady of the United States. She returns to her home country, it could be. She's bored by all the pomp and circumstance, all the duties. The first, the first lady started to get her down, started to become a little bit too much just relentless performance. And she just wants to, she just wants to relax and let go and blow off some steam. So she sort of sneaks away, right, from her entourage, maybe with the, you know, the help of decoys. I'm not sure. I mean, this is all stuff we, you know, this is the movie, right, that, that, that Kubrick would make. Anyways, pulls her away uh, to this tiny little apartment, right, in this Soviet-era apartment block, right, you know what I mean? Modernist, a Corbusier, Corbusier-esque, Corbusier-esque. He's plying her, right, with, um, you know, substances, whatever they may be. And he's telling her, listen, you have got to get very, very, very strong lysergic acid diethylamide. You have to get a lot, you have to get a big dose of it into the, into the brain, into the bloodstream of Lionel Lost, or the world is going to blow up. to get this hardcore psychedelic into his body or something really weird is going to happen to the whole world. He has to have essentially a kind of a spiritual conversion because it changes you, right? It changes the structures of the brain. She gets it into it somehow, imaginatively, during their, uh, their nightly activist, whatever it may be. Um, and Lionel Lost, of course, has a a uh, spiritual conversion. He has a Christ experience, and we see it, and it's the most astonishing trip you've ever, uh, you could ever imagine. Only Kubrick could imagine it. Phantasmagoria of American history is horrific, and he feels it all. So he feels it. He internalizes every single slaughtered buffalo, right? Every single enslaved person, he internalizes it all. And he believes that he's, he becomes Jesus Christ. He believes that he is the second coming. He believes this. And then he puts it out to the public. Mm. And um, some people believe him, big time. He makes a lot of sense, he's the second coming. He's not King Cyrus. He's Jesus himself, because he suddenly now believes it. Um, that's the point at which they impeach. <laughs>